This is the Stock Trading Reality Podcast, episode 23. I lost $10,000 of that man's money in one day. This is the Stock Trading Reality Podcast, where you get to see the realistic side of a trader's journey. Get inspired and stay motivated by everyday normal people who are currently on their journey to trading success. And this is your host, who went to an all-guys high school, Clay Trader. Now, I have a good reason for this. I Well, it's probably not a, a super good reason, but I don't know how to drive a stick shift. I still don't know how to drive a stick shift. Um, and my dad had a, a really nice, pretty cool Jeep that uh, I think a Wrangler where like, uh, when it's summer out, you can be like open air. Can you tell I'm not very much of a car guy, but I'm pretty sure that's a Jeep Wrangler. And, uh, I thought, Hey, we should take this out. But then I re realized, uh Oh, I don't know how to drive a stick, but my wife is a cool, is a cool girl. So she's like, Oh, I can drive. And she didn't judge me for it or anything. So yes, because my uh, wife knows how to drive it. Well, at that time, my, I don't even know if we're, this isn't a relationship show, right? Chaz? Well, I don't know. It could be, but I know yeah, that's, a, that's a good way to start off the relationship, though. I like Point that. being that my wife on her first date had to drive because I did not know how to drive a stick shift. But um, this could go off on a million t tangents. But Chez already spoke up. He is our co-host. Uh, and I'm very proud of Chez. Uh, I, I want to give him a shout out here. Um, you know, he's for those of you that uh, maybe have never listened, if you go back and listen to uh, episode number one, uh, that's where I interviewed him. And you got to hear kind of his story. Uh, and you know, he, he's been on a journey and I, I, I feel like he's really gotten his groove now. He's, uh, he took the advanced options course that I offer and he's, he's been, uh, he'd been doing options before that. Uh, but he had a very, very good day today, uh, being, uh, the time we're recording this, uh, I Chez, correct if I'm wrong, but you had a, what about a $900 day today? $125 today is my biggest day to date. To date. So that's awesome. And it was all in a very controlled fashion uh i don't know summarize things in about uh, about a minute or so Chez. well to give a little context i spent you know more than a year year and a half trading in various different ways and um, i'm a firm believer and i always tell people this it's all about finding your place in the market no two people trade the same you can't be a breakout trader the same as somebody's a you know a channel player and i had to you know try these different ways that didn't work, cost me money, and um, you know, you put out the course, I started applying those advanced options right away, and um, you know, they, didn't all, they don't all work. By no means is advanced options like a, you, know, you always make money, but um, I feel better, I sleep easy, you know, trades are really working out, and I'm you know, actually showing a profit. And This is like the first time the, the clouds have parted, and I can actually see like a really bright future doing this, so it's awesome. And my favorite part about it is because, I mean, Chez and I, we talk on Skype and, and all that throughout the day. He's very me me mechanical with, with his system in place. And I thank you for saying that, Chez, about, you know, everybody's going to be a little bit different, but he has a system in place that doesn't allow him to get emotional. It doesn't allow him to get, there's one little area, position sizing, where he could, uh, that's the only part that's kind of vulnerable to emotions, but everything else, he's very mechanical about it. It's a true system where he sets things and, you know, just based off the way advanced options work. He knows his risk. He knows how much he can make. He's got all this stuff factored in, and it's really a set it and forget it type thing. Uh, but it's just awesome to see how mechanical he's become. And today, he it's, it's earning season right now to set up a little context. So there's all sorts of earnings, and there's some strategies that you can put in a place that uh, really take advantage of situations, uh, and he did that indeed. So Chez, congratulations. Keep it up. Now, by the time this airs, uh, you know, you better still be mechanical. You better still not be blowing your account, but uh, good work. Now, I'll today... Be, I'll be putting a down payment on a helicopter by then, so we'll be good. Okay, sweet, sweet. Uh, you know, maybe even a yacht. Think about that. But uh, today we have a, a very uh, unique interview. Uh, we are talking with somebody that, as I commend, as you'll see at the beginning of the interview, uh, I, I appreciate their courage. I commend them for their courage because it's not easy to talk about losers and talk about mistakes. And this person, to be blunt, has made a lot of them. And they're, they're not successful yet. Um, and they're not even really, they're just, as you'll find out, just literally getting back into the market after having getting knocked out. They've been knocked down, gotten up, knocked down, gotten up. They've been knocked down. And now they're finally just trying to get back up again. Um, so wherever this goes, you know, we shall see. But uh, this will be a very different interview, uh, but one that I think will be beneficial because, you know, it, it's a situation where, you know, I, and I hear it a lot. No, it, it, you can learn a lot more from somebody's mistakes than somebody's successes. And sure, you can learn from people's successes. And sure, that's motivating. But today, I hope it's kind of the opposite. I hope it's 
motivating of what not to do. So as you'll see, Chuz and I really try to focus on kind of the, the things that just weren't smart. And you know, going forward, be mov- be motivated by those things, but in the opposite situation or opposite direction. Be motivated. Wow, I really don't want to do that because, uh, as you'll see with Alex, who's a member of the chat room, uh, he's very transparent. He's very courageous to to you know fess up to all these uh, boneheaded things that he's done. Uh, but it gives a very real situation of just how uh, the market can be very unforgiving uh, if you don't treat it with respect and don't have self control as a trader. So, without further ado. Uh, let's hop into this very unique and I think very beneficial interview. Well, hey, Alex, welcome to the show. Thank you. Glad to be here, Clay. Now, I want to just say, first off, uh, I really appreciate you um, hanging out and uh, you know being willing to discuss your trading with us. Uh, there was another individual who said, yeah, you know, I made a lot of mistakes. I'm willing to share it. Just let me know how I can help. Well, okay, I'm doing a podcast. You want to be on it? And then the emails just stopped showing up. So, um, Alex, I commend you right off the get-go because um, I told you up front, I want, I want to make this real. I want to make this very uh, educational. Um, so I'm, I, we're going to have to talk about your losers. And you said, hey, man, that's fine. Let, let's do it. So unlike the other person, you actually stepped up to the plate. So that in and of itself, uh, I think, says a lot about your character. You're willing to kind of just talk about the low points, which is not easy to do. I don't think I've ever met anybody that enjoys talking about the losers um, and kind of their mistakes, but here you are. So uh, I, again, I really appreciate that. I really can't reiterate that uh, enough. So let's just start at the very start. What got you interested in the market? Uh, you know, what kind of drew your attention, and uh, what made you finally kind of pull that trigger to get involved? Well, I was 18 at the time and um, moved to Florida. I was, I was debating on joining the army, so. Uh, my wife, I got married at 18, uh, moved to Florida, and um, I was sitting at a restaurant with my wife's uncle and his friend that he trades in the market, and uh, they were talking. I was just kind of listening to them, got interested, so I uh, looked into myself, opened a, immediately opened an E-Trade account, um, did some simple Google searches, um, looked on Investopedia. And somehow found iHub <laughs> and uh, started trading penny stocks. So let's <laughs> so, just let's just recap. So hey, I'm sitting at a lunch table. Yeah. Somebody mentions the market. Oh, that sounds good. So my research is all right. Why don't I start to do some Google searches? That leads you to a penny stock message board, and you thought, hey, oh hey, penny stock sounds good, and you already had an E-Trade account in place. Was it E-Trade account before or after you signed up for, uh, or I should say before or after you found Investors Hub? Uh, it was probably a week or two after because I had a hard time even where to even start. Okay, so you just hopped right into the action and you're, you're into <laughs> yeah. penny stocks, the, the shark-filled waters. And what year was this when you uh, hopped in? This is 2009. 2009. Okay, so you've definitely been around for a while. So 2009, you you hop into penny stocks, and do you remember the first one that you uh, played at all? Oh, uh, yeah, I'll never forget it. That's uh, I don't know if I remember the ticker, but I'm sure you might know is Camelot Entertainment Group. Uh, don't C- tell me C M L T. I feel like yeah, yeah, C M G R, I believe, or C M. Okay, C M G R. Yep. No, I totally remember that name. Yep. That was the most garbage diluted machine <laughs> ever. So how did uh, how did trading go immediately after just kind of jumping in the waters? Um, you know what 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 happened? Well, this is you know it wasn't too long after the market you know crashed and it was you know it was still slow I guess you could say so um, I started looking and I started looking at Sirius XM radio and then didn't get in, I put five hundred into E Trade um, but didn't do anything. Just kind of sat still for you, so you didn't yeah, have like any much. immediate losses or anything crazy like that. No, like five hundred dollars would—I I forgot what serious was a dollar something. It wasn't. I mean, it was just nothing. It was barely moving. Anything was moving, so that just kind of—I I got bored. Gotcha, gotcha. So now, were you trying to? Were you finding names, you know, based on what you had known, like household names, like you know, the Facebooks or the Twitters or stuff like that? And I know you were in penny stocks at that point, um, or were you just kind of looking at Investors Hub and seeing who, what everyone was talking about that week, and you know, maybe taking a look and throwing some money on the line? Let's see. The, the individual I went 
to, to lunch with my, my uh, uncle's friend. He started naming off Ford, which was cheap back then, also GM, and I think GM still had the bankrupt symbol. So I got excited when I saw, I think it was like nine cents. I, it was nine cents, and I said, it, it got to like 30 cents, so I was kind of multiplying. Well, if I put 500 in the, the ticker, if it goes here, I can make this amount. So that really sparked my interest tremendously. I totally remember doing that when you pull out the calculator and you're like, okay, if I had put in this amount at this level and then it goes up to here, oh man, well, what happens if I would have put in this amount? And then if it goes up to that level and I, I can totally relate to that. So did you, did you end up putting any money into these, any of these stocks at this point? Yeah, I did Sirius XM um, and then the rest was um, the penny stocks. Uh, I know another one that I remember that never moved, but I put a bunch of, well, 500 in is uh Copper King Mining, I think it's CPRQK or KQ, one of the, uh, some, something like that. So you but, put your money in, did you, when you, you said they didn't move, so does that imply that they didn't move down either, that you were able to sell for break even, or I mean, were you taking <laughs> losses on these, or, or, or what was kind of the dynamic there? Well, I'd buy them a triple zero one, and I have about four or five hundred thousand shares, <laughs> get excited because, uh, I said, man, if they go to a penny, you're going to be rich. Yeah. And the thing is, when I first started, I said, man, what kind of madness is this? She talked, you know, I was looking at the charts, then, go, you know, let's say six months or a year prior, you'd see 30 cents on a chart and then 60 cents. But really knowing now, that was nothing but reserve splits and they go back to nothing. Blue so you were basically you were just throwing darts at that point. In time. Oh you, yeah, you, I mean I had no clue. And you were just basically running numbers, saying, "Wow, if it hits here, I can make this amount. So if I can buy something at triple zero one, then and if it goes up to even a penny, I mean it was at thirty cents, but let's just say it goes up to a penny, I can still make a lot of money. So that's pretty much. That, is it safe to say that was your strategy at that point oh, in time? Yeah, pretty much. I was just looking at it the wrong way. Um, I think the last trade I placed, I made with Sirius XM. I think I made like fifty dollars on it, and then uh, I just withdrew all of it out and got bored and quit until last last March. What actually led you? You know, I know you kind of got bored. Things weren't really going, you know, huge or you know, going down fast. Um, what you know, what led you back? So now I'm back in Louisiana. I moved from Louisiana to Florida, so now I'm back in Louisiana. I got a good paying job, and then I got another part time job. So I was doing fairly well, you know, money wise a week. And then it was around tax season, so I said, you know, I have some extra money, and uh, I don't know, I just had to just, one day, I just said, I'm going to start going in market again. So now you got that, you know, more expendable income, and you decided to kind of get back in the market, and you're right back at your kind of home place of iHub. Now, are the, the penny stocks at this point moving much more than they did in 2009, or are you still kind of, you know, having some issues finding, you know, plays that might have more volume than, you know, the first ones you were looking at? Um, actually, they were very, you know, way more active. I, uh, I found AQM, A-Q-U-M, put 500 into it, and I think I was up to 160, and this is on a Friday, by the way, so I was getting excited, jumping up and down, and uh, I held over the weekend, and, um, you know, what happened on Monday, <laughs> back to square one. Well, I didn't lose it all, but I I lost my profit, so I I got upset, of course. And your reasoning for what? Why did you hold it over the weekend? Why Why didn't you want to lock in any profits? You thought it was going higher, or what was your rationale well, the there? Hype, the hype. I mean, the hype was unbelievable. You know, it's going higher. I think I bought it four triple zero four, and um, I think weeks prior it might have been a double zero two. So just the hype, you know, just believing, you know, drinking a Kool Aid. Do you remember any of this hype? Just because, I mean, let's keep in mind some people may be listening that, what are you talking about hype? What are you talking about? I mean, so what, where were you getting the hype from? What was the source of this hype? And, I mean, what sort of hype besides it's going to go higher? Were they using any sort of persuasive techniques or, I mean, well, looking back? Well, we have a PR coming out Monday. The CEO, I just talked to the CEO, real good guy. He has a good track record. Um there's just so many. No, I mean, yeah, I, the good old PR. Oh, a PR is coming. A PR I mean, is I, coming. I don't remember his individual name, but he's well known on iHub. Oh my goodness! Real, real well known for pouring that Kool Aid, huh? Oh yes. I, ha I have a little funny story about it um, in a minute about it, but. 
No, let's hear it right now. I don't want to wait a minute for a funny story. Well, I'm ready to laugh now. I want to jump ahead in front of a question what caused me to uh, to change, but one of the things that caused me to to realize what am I doing with this garbage is this specific person said that Halliburton was going to buy this stock. And I said, ah. what? $40 stock, a well-known company, is going to buy a triple zero stock. So I knew then I have to find something else. So you actually, somebody, that's interesting. So somebody was using Kool-Aid and they almost over diluted you to the point where you're like, wait a second, this is all way, this is all too crazy. And that's what actually made you change your mind that you got to change was because somebody poured you too much Kool-Aid. Yeah. I mean, first I lost the money, the, the, the profit I could have had. So that didn't go well with me. And then, um, I was looking at other stocks and I was just, you know, kept reading this message board and he said, Halliburton is going to buy this stock. And then I knew then I said, this is something I don't have no business being into. It's, uh, you're better off going to a casino if you want to play this. Right. Okay. So you, you use the word change. So define change. What, what did you do to, to kind of try to take a new path? Well, this specific, this same person, specific, I asked that ch chat room, that, that uh, message board, I said, you know, for that specific stock, where can I learn about the market? And he said, claytrader.com. <laughs> oh, well, I guess thanks for not throwing this person under the bus then. If they're, uh, uh, <laughs> yeah, wait, said, so let me, wait a second, give me this. So the person that was saying that Halliburton is going to buy this little triple zero penny stock was the same person that referred you to ClayTrader.com? Yeah, because he had, he had robotic trading at the time. Yeah, Interesting. I know, I, I know who this is, and uh, he's actually he's not one of those people, Clay, that just likes to call your, your charts a bunch of wizardry and stuff like that. He actually understands what technical analysis. He's still a pumper, don't get me wrong. But um, yeah, he's actually, he actually talks very highly of you, and he actually does uh, refer people to the website. Well then, let's let's not throw him under the bus. Then I mean, we'll uh, well, I did not know that. Anyway, that kind of caught me off guard. I would never associate the two, but um, yeah. So okay, so you thought this person said go to claytrader.com. So take us from there. Well, you know, actually remembering back, I um, I went to your website months prior for just scrolling around and I saw robotic trading and I said, what kind of what is robotic? You talking about I'm playing with a robot? <laughs> <laughs> so so um, I just kind of you know, passed it around, but uh, I went to your website and uh, I saw the course and then I didn't buy anything yet. I, I just, you know, signed up for the chat room and then I watched your welcome video where you're not, you know, how you got started and you, your commissions and stuff at, uh, when you first started. So I joined the chat room and uh, at that time, the under one start, you know, the chat room was just booming, busy, booming and uh so I got, you know, I started watching it and getting involved. A few days later, I said, you know, if I'm going to stick with this, I'm going to have to get educated. So I bought robotic trading and watched cool. it in one weekend. <laughs> there you go. That's some dedication. You sound like me where I would, you know, drive 12 hours of video in in a day or something on a Saturday when I had time. And yeah, I was working 16-hour days. Yeah, so that's if you guys can't you know understand Alex's dedication there, then I don't know I don't know you must be deaf, but um, but yeah the pennies pennies were definitely busy back then. Uh, that's actually kind of around the time I joined, um, but kind of similar to Alex, you know I saw these people making technical alerts and it just I didn't understand. You know I knew a little bit, you know whatever you could find on Google or some free stuff, but you know I at the same time kind of realized that I needed to kind of be in control and be able to read the chart myself. So so you had gone through the course in a weekend and you know did you instantly become a millionaire? No, I um I rushed into things so bad it's unbelievable. You, you what? Say that rushed. word again? Rushed. Rushed, okay. Listeners, rushing. Now for those longtime listeners, you've heard this isn't anything new. Uh, you've heard you got to slow down. You can't rush. But here it is once again popping up. So sorry to cut you off there, Alex, but you said a very key word that, uh, you know, newer traders uh, really need to pay attention to. So sorry about that. But so you rushed into things. So how'd that turn out? Well, I, I didn't stop playing penny stocks. I didn't listen. I didn't I didn't learn anything from my past experiences. So I still played it. And I was well, I do want to defend you a little bit here at the time to set context. Penny stocks were I mean, it was. I, I've talked to traders and they said, you know, they hadn't seen anything like it for a decade. Yep. You know, the last time was the dot com boom. So to stay in penny stocks, I'm not going to call that crazy or a bad decision because at that time, 
it was truly a, almost a once in a decade type, uh, you know, area to be in with all the marijuana hype and is it going to get legalized and all that. So it was very unique uh, in that sense. So um, you went back to penny stocks. What, so don't be too hard on yourself. I, you know, that was a logical decision knowing, you know, the time back then. But uh, do you remember what sort of ticker symbols you started playing then and how'd that turn out? Well, every ticker I've ever played in it, every every single one, the most I've ever made on a penny stock is $147. What about the, loss? What's the most you've lost? Oh, hell, probably 800 But, you know, a combination of, I, you know, I'd fund every week. I would fund, I would fund, lose, fund and lose, fund and lose. So 350 to 500 I would lose. Now, you know, <laughs> At what point, you know, what did it take for you to kind of stop and say, I don't want to have to, you know, keep kind of putting money in and just continuously losing? When did you realize that you need to kind of reevaluate, uh, you know, what you were doing and kind of figuring out what your weak point was? It took a long time. I, uh, I was probably, I did that probably for three months. And then um, when, when I was placing trades, I'd wait 15, 20 minutes to get in the trade, an hour to get out of the trade. And that was just an emotional roller coaster for me. I mean, it, 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 I was a smoker, then I was going to two packs a day. <laughs> that's, and that's, that's also an account drainer there. I mean, cigarette packs aren't very cheap. So right there from, uh, you're losing all kinds of money. Every single one of those <laughs> things you pop in your mouth is like a losing trade. No offense <laughs> to you smokers out there, but... Uh, you know, keep it. Here's some motivation for you people that smoke. And if you want to trade, stop smoking, and you're going to have all kinds of positive cash flow that you can put in your trading account. So I kind of <laughs> say that tongue in cheek, but there's some truth to it. I mean, uh, you know, those things are expensive. So, but two yeah. packs a day. So, so that tells me you, is it fair to say that you probably weren't even really technically trading, uh, you know, with chart? Were you more so just gambling at that point in time, if you're being oh. honest? I'll, I'll probably do that majority. I think just recently I started actually trading or getting serious about trading. Yeah, so this whole I'll, time from March last year to, to March of this year, or whenever I took a break, it's been at least three months I took a break from the market. Yeah, I wasn't trading. I was just, I thought I was trading, but looking back, I was just pure, pure gambling. And obviously, it didn't. Gambling doesn't work in the markets, does it? Oh no! See, good with the market, you can go to a casino and put a nickel in the slot machine. But in the market, you could put five dollars and instantly your PNL jumps down fifty, down five, up, 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 down, and that just plays with your emotions. It, it, it's a whole different psychological game. No, I never thought about that, but that's an excellent point. A slot machine. It's just boom. You're either it's very binary. You're either going to make money or you're not. But with the market, uh, yeah, you're right. It is. It's it's okay. I'm up. Oh, oh shoot, I'm down. Okay, I'm up. Oh, I'm up way. Oh, now I'm back. I mean, yeah. So that's that's a good point compared to. So psychologically, it is actually a lot different than Las Vegas because at least you know casinos, it, it it's very binary. So yeah, I mean, you're you're struggling. You're you're okay. What's going on? So what was your next step? When did you, you know, um, and I know where some of you went from here, but listeners don't. So what was the next step after, wow, this penny stock stuff is not, it's just not working out. Where did you go from there? Well, I started paying attention to the over dollar, you know, the chat room and um, it was starting to get a little, you know, more active. And um, I think it was like five or six of y'all in the room and Arroyo, R-O-Y-L was moving one day and I think it moved fairly quick. And I started watching it, and I said, "Man!" And at that time, I didn't know, I didn't know the definition of liquidity. You know, like I said, I would take 15 minutes to get in, an hour to get out, and then by that time, you've lost just waiting. <laughs> so, right. I started watching the over dollar room, and uh, I said, "Wow, they move better." Um, you, there's actually a chart; you can actually follow a chart more. So I just quit playing pennies totally. I said, enough of this garbage. I'm strictly in a dollar room now, over dollar. And, and to set up a little context here, the way uh, the inner circle chat room is set up is we have a chat room for penny stocks, and then we have a chat room for stocks over a dollar so that you know we can kind of separate the two because people that are playing big boards, they don't want to hear about penny stock trash. People that are playing penny stock trash don't want to hear about blue chip companies. So that way we divide it. So Alex is just saying, 
he made the transition from the penny stock room, which at that time was really starting to die down because the boom, you know, the marijuana stuff all finally started to, to come, uh, you know, uh, to shrink up. All those penny stocks started to collapse. So he moved over there. And yeah, I mean, that's a great point about, hey, wow, there's actually a chart. And the reason there's a chart is because there's actually consistent volume. And mm. that's what he means by liquidity, consistent volume. So you discovered, hey, this all sounds good. So at this point, did you have to refund or did you have to, you know, uh, put more money into your account uh, or, you know, where are you kind of standing account wise? Yes. Like I said, I've never funded more than five, six hundred at a time. And um, I funded again and I played it was around earnings season. I played some Chinese garbage small caps <laughs> and uh, but it, it never got me anywhere because I with a five hundred dollar on a three dollar stock. It just it, it doesn't it didn't get me anywhere. And I still didn't know charting what true chart what true trading and chart knowledge is so now you know you still got a, a, a you know a small account you're focusing on micro caps i'm assuming just based on the price and you can kind of get more shares and more exposure um but you know so so with that kind of small account and stuff like that you know what what is the solution you know are you going to put more money on the line or you're going to you know trade more micro caps well I got a little arrogant too because I wasn't, you know, in a chat. Wait, you got what? Arrogant. So far, you <laughs> use the word rushed, and now you're getting arrogant. So I'm not. I want to focus on some key words here. So proceed on. For you people listening, well, rushing and arrogance. Uh, let's see where that leads things. Well, you know, I was on my lunch break a lot, and I would run my scanners, and I've. I made some fairly decent alerts in the chat room. Some of them, I, I remember JRJC moved a hundred over a hundred percent. I learned of that, and I learned of some other ones. So I was, still, you know, thinking to myself, "Man, I know what I'm doing," and I, it got to my head. And uh, the thing is, I never played where I learned. <laughs> so <laughs> I, I got to stop this because I think it was Zen Trader from I don't episode ten. I, I don't remember, but he said the same thing. You know, it's a lot different to uh, make an alert than it is to actually act on the alert and manage the trade. And mm -hmm. I, I, I just laugh because I can totally relate to that. I can totally see. Wow, man, I'm making all these good alerts. So I know what I'm doing. And yeah. But filling the rest of the way, did you actually know what you were doing when you finally put some real trades on? No, I, I didn't. I, I, not at all. <laughs> so <laughs> were you making any money at all? Or was it, I mean, what, what, what was your account doing? Or was it literally just always being depleted? Always being depleted. Just every single time. I, like I said, I'd make 50 here, lose 100, make 20, lose like I've never really had a very uh, a successful trade until later on down the road, about October of last year. So what did you do to kind of you know avoid pattern day trading, or you know what, where did you want to try to find your profits if you had been kind of you know losing losing some refunding, losing some refunding, losing some refunding? Well, the way I got around the pattern day trading for. A, as I open up two e trades account, one in my name and the other in my wife and I name, so all I could do was just transfer transfer funds between them. So that would give me six trades, but that really caused more problems because I was over trading then. <laughs> and over trading, again, one of those key words. So rushing, arrogance, over trading, you know, is just not what you want to do. So you had more money at your disposal, but this mm -hmm. just led you to over trading. And I, I guess explain what was so difficult about over trading. I mean what were what were you doing? What was causing all this? Well, I had no self control at all. I had to I had felt like I always had to be in a trade. Even in a trade I knew going into it, what am I doing? Um but I it's sad and honest answer, I just had no self control and um so there was still that that there was still that gambling type tendencies there yeah. that were just reaching out at you saying, No, don't forget about that. But what you're acknowledging saying you had no self control in regards to those gambling tendencies. You just continued to let them take control of you, uh, opposed to you know controlling them by having self control. So is that is that a pretty fair statement? Those gambling tendencies just kept overtaking you. Yeah, that's pretty yeah fair enough. And uh, you know if I start on Monday and I'm in the hole starting Monday, then Wednesday I'd want to make up the losses from the past two days. And it's so just like an emotional roller coaster. <laughs> so now I'm sensing some revenge trading in there. You yeah. had money and then you lost it. So now your mentality is, okay, I got to get that money back, which is going <laughs> to cause you to probably force trades. I would assume you're, you're just 
putting trades on, you were making decisions based off not the fact of what does the chart look like, what does the setup look like, but rather you're making decisions based off of I got to get that money back. Is, is that yeah. pretty accurate there? Yeah, oh yes, very, very much. And again, uh, you know, where did that all lead you? That you were over trading and uh, you were losing money. So is this where? Because you had more money at your disposal. So now what's going on with this money? Is is it getting depleted back down? Yeah, just pretty much getting depleted. And um, and in the meantime, I'd I'd stay up. I mean, there, there was literally on the weekends, on my off day. I'd wake up at seven. I'd literally be in front of my computer, studying charts, robotic trading, till eleven o'clock. I mean, literally, not get up. I mean, I had I had the desire to study, I had the desire to learn, but I just couldn't control. I couldn't say I couldn't tell myself, "Look, step back. You know, study first. Slow you down, just, right? Slow down. You're you're just struggling. I got to make this money, but it's not working out. You're studying hard." Uh, but to me, I, I'm going to try to summarize what's going on in your case. It sounds like you're working. You weren't working smarter. You're working harder. So sure, you were working hard, but it wasn't really in the smartest way because you kept rushing yourself. Mm -hmm. You had no self control. So yeah, there's no. I don't think anybody can doubt your hard work, but it wasn't really smart the way uh, you were approaching it, which you know really caught up in bitching. So now I know from talking in the interview, uh, or I should say before we started the interview, you had mentioned and started to tell the story about Chez and I said, no, 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 don't, don't tell us. Let's just do this on the air so it's a, as genuine as possible. But you had mentioned you, know, you, you, you acquired more of a larger chunk of money to start to trade with. So how did that all come about? And then you know, how'd that go? Let's see. October of last year, I had an individual ask me, hey, you want to trade for me? We split 50-50 profits. I'll give you a $30,000 account. Pretty much what he did, he gave me trading authorization over his account. And um, I said, sure. When can I start? <laughs> and uh, this is October of last year. And during this time, we also had our, our second baby. So that gave me a few weeks off work. So that was a picture perfect, you know, event for me. And... Uh, so he told me, okay, $30,000 account, I'm willing to risk $5,000. As soon as the account gets to $25,000, you, you're fired, you're cut off. I said, okay, fine, fair enough. So I started, and um, for like first week, every morning before lunchtime, I'd be up thousand and twelve hundred dollars i i just want to I, I specifically remember that i'm like wow alex it's tearing it up he must be working smarter not necessarily harder now i i, I thought wow you are doing great but sorry to, I, I just want to make i do specifically remember this when you started to you know you, it seemed to be you got into a little groove but keep on going but I'm, I'm very curious what exactly happened here well but every time uh -oh. by lunchtime i'd lose all of it i'd be up um, let's see, 8.30 market opens for me. Within an hour to an hour and a half, I was usually up for $1,000 to $1,200. 11.30, 12 o'clock, all of it wiped plus more. The next morning, the same thing for about five days. Be mindful, this is also when the spy crashed last year. So was that a result of just kind of lunchtime lull trading or was it just, you know, you were you were happy with your gains and wanted to kind of put more on the line? It's that word self-control. Like I, I, I had the feeling I had to be in a trade. I had to be in a trade. Well, let me rephrase that to also the account was $30,000 account. In order for me to get paid, I'd have to get it to 35000 And then after that, split. So I was trying to rush to get it to five, you know, thirty-five thousand. Right. That's that was that. Obviously, the person that was having you trade for them has probably never traded or doesn't understand the psychology of trading. Because for him to put that uh, incent or for him to put that hurdle in the process, I mean, that's totally going to jack with your mind. Well, I got to get this thing up to thirty-five thousand, or else I'm totally wasting my time right now. Which therefore is going to lead to more stupidity and forced trades. So, yeah, the, the guy whoever did that. Shame on him for uh, not understanding trader psychology because that was a terrible thing. Now, I'm not excusing you, but I am saying, you know, that definitely didn't make your life any easier uh, when you sit there thinking, well, I got to get 10 grand before I even, uh, you know, before I, I, I even start to put any money in my pocket. So, 
how long did this go on uh, where you'd you know, make a thousand and then give it all back and then some? I, I do remember all this. And I, and I remember saying, hey, man, you know, why don't you just try stopping by, you know, 11 a.m. Eastern time or, or <laughs> noon Eastern? And yeah, 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 yeah. And uh, you just kept, uh, I don't know, you kept shooting yourself in control, but you've admitted it. It's just that self-control thing. So how long did this go on before, uh, you know, the guy, before, I guess, really, before you got fired? Um, let's see, about three, three weeks. <laughs> What was the what was the trade that finally did you in that had your buddy say, "Hey man, I'm sorry, but this is not working out." Was there a specific trade, or how that all uh, unfold? Oh, yes. And I want everybody that's listening to please listen and learn from this mistake. Um, so let's see. First, I overtraded. I, I, I felt the desire to constantly be in a trade. You know, have no self control, so that's a no no in the market. And um, let's say. So I'd lost everything by lunchtime. So if you're up a thousand, I mean, you got to remember, I'm making five hundred, six hundred dollars a week at work, and I'm over here making a thousand in an hour. I mean, what kind? Of, so the mind did, is a tricky place because you would think, yeah, well, what are you doing, Alex? But I will stick up for Alex, and I'm sure Chess will stick up for him too. The mind is a tricky place. There are voices in your mind that, unless you've done this before, you know, it, it's hard to relate. Chess, I mean, you would agree, right? I mean, it's it's. People, people that have never traded are, are hearing Alex say, "Wow, you are an idiot! You make five to six hundred a week, but then you make a thousand in an hour, but yet you want more." I mean, I mean, you it's, can't. It's, it's just straight up psychology. There's no other way, kind of around it. You know, it's just pretty much greed. It's just straight up greed. Yeah. You, you think that you can make another thousand in another hour, and what you end up doing is just like Alex said, you give back, you know, your entire gains and then some. By the time you know lunch is over. Yeah, and, and it's true. I, and the thing is, I'm not proud. Of what I've done, I'm I'm glad I am sharing it with people because I hope, I hope somebody listen, you know, that's in the same situation has the same tendencies. They learn from it because now, I I want to I want to get back on track because you said you know all right there's something here that hopefully people can learn a lesson from. Yeah. So you you were over so what and I know I I know where this is headed and I agree it's a a, a huge point. So you're over trading. You didn't have any self control. But what was finally the straw that broke the camel's back? Okay, I um okay, the spy was crashing. Like it went down hard in October, November, whatever month it was, but it went down hard. So I was playing TVIX, which is a duck two times or three times um ETF that moves opposite of the spy. So as the spy is crashing, TVIX goes up. So the day prior to the firing, I was trading TVIX and uh it was going against me. Looking at it now, I didn't think at the moment, but I kept averaging down, averaging down. Uh Oh, you started, you were doing what? Averaging down. There's another one of those key words, averaging down. And as much as some people out there that, uh, you know, it's averaging down works if you trade on spreadsheets. But uh, in the real world, as Alex is about to reveal, tell us how averaging down worked for you. Well, the first day I averaged down and I forgot how many shares, but it was way more than I ever need to be in. And, um... I came out with like 70 profit after three hours of fighting to average down just to come back. But like, you know, in, this, in the meantime, I was down 1,000, down 700. I mean, it was just, it was horrible. So, but I came out alive that day, $70. And, um, <clears throat> bad habit, Chez, do you just realize what happened here? So averaging down worked for him this time. He was all able. It takes, all it takes is, uh, is a one occurrence. So, you know, it worked that day. What about the next day? So the next day, I um, I forgot if I was short or long, but it went opposite of what I was. I believe you were short, if I remember right. I want to say short. Yeah, I, I believe so. And um, no, because that next day, Spy recovered really good. So I just TVIX did the opposite, and um, I ended up averaging down, averaging down. Didn't even. I wasn't even counting what I was averaging down. I ended up with a 10,000 share position on a TVAX was four or five. And I was not or told not to use more than 30,000. And uh, here I am with a $50,000 position. So and, you went in pretty big. So, wow, that's, that's, that's a big yeah. size position. And I was emotional. I was shaking. I was like, what am I doing? 
Um, uh, I, I feel like going to buy a carton of cigarettes to smoke it out of the stress I have just hearing about that. Yeah. Chez, I was going to say the same thing. I, I'm stressing out right here just hearing all this. Man, oh, all right. Well, this is, the, yeah. Now, oh, needless man. to say, nobody knows about this. This is just me and the guy. No, I have never told because this is not something I'm proud of. But anyway, as we all know, the market just made a big V, just jumped and never looked back. I lost $10,000 of that man's money in one day, averaging down $10,000. And let's see, do you were where, where was the account before the $10,000? let us do some math here. I was probably around, he had to, he had to deposit at least 10 to at least to get it over that day trade. Right, he gave you 30 to start with, right? Yeah, but prior to that, I've lost. So, so that's he was probably what I mean. closer so what was to the, the account twenty-five thousand. Go- He's probably close to the threshold right there, and yeah, it's pretty much do or die at that point. Of twenty-five thousand. Okay. Yeah. So let's just say twenty-five thousand. Remember, he's allowed to lose five thousand. So he's basically right there, and then you lost ten thousand from there. Thousand dollars. Because I'm you were doing kidding. what? Well, I wasn't even looking at the chart. I, but you were doing a certain quote unquote strategy. What was the strategy you were implementing? Down. Averaging down. And it cost you $10,000. Uh, so it, it didn't quite work out for you. It cost his $10,000 too. It wasn't even his. It cost his buddy $10,000. Exactly. Now, he wasn't very upset because he had plenty of money. But the point is, the averaging down, it's a horrible. I mean, just think about it. There was some, that was my own account or somebody else's account. And, and you get to a point where. For, you're forgetting the chart, you're letting emotions control you and you're trading, and eventually you don't even know how many shares you bought. You're 10,000 shares in, it moves down a dollar, you just lost $10,000. Yeah, that's that's pretty crazy. Uh, I mean, ten, that, that's a lot of money. And so at this point, your buddy says, all right, you're fired, man. This is not working out. You're gone. No. Uh, so <laughs> you, you stuck with you after that? We talked and... Well, see, the thing about it is he said, but man, you're a good trader. You're, you're doing better than I did. You, I mean, you're up 1,000 a, a or 1,200 in an hour. I mean, this is phenomenal. But then he knew that I had a problem of being in a trade, so he said, just stop. So he, he put 10000 back in and got me back to where I need to trade. Then he said, I'll give you another 5000 I'll, I'll risk five more thousand just because I know you're, you can do this. I said, okay. Oh, my God. I said, okay. <laughs> and uh, But I want to make something clear before we go into the next. With the idea of the spy and stuff, for everybody listening, trade what you see, not what you think will happen. Because, see, nobody thought that the market was just going to make a straight v- V-shape, just jump back up. And I was thinking, oh, it's got to go back down. We just, hell, we just went through a big crash. And that was not the case. So I wasn't trading what the chart was telling me. Yeah, in the markets, the quicker you learn that nothing has to happen, uh, the, the, the better your mindset's going to be. So, uh, you know, we, we know, okay, so eventually I, I know this comes to an end. So what was the, the, the final, final straw that broke the camel's back with uh, your relationship here with your buddy? Um, well, I trade and I lose every day trying to make back that 10000 because, see, now I have to make all that back up to be for me to start making money so you can imagine the psychology you know the mental state i was in and um every so you, day you I were trade, just forcing you were forcing trades all over the place yeah, yeah I was pressure and Too then much. Uh, yeah, go ahead you know forcing trades and then i'll lose every single day and then uh, one day yelp w-e-l-p had earnings after hours and it was tanking. I went short, and I covered real quick and made a few hundred. I remember this. I do remember this specifically. <laughs> Keep, yep, I and remember then, this one. And then um, somehow I went long. I was so emotional trying to cover so fast because the price was moving so rapidly either direction. Somehow I went long so many thousand shares. And you know, you, you're going long when in a tank in stock is not a bright thing to do. And then I lost everything. I think I lost another five thousand to pretty much get me fired. So Yelp, it started off good, but then you ended up on the long side, and that I, I do remember that. 
it ended up costing you, you know, uh, another chunk. I didn't, re- I didn't know it was five thousand. So another five thousand. Your buddy said, "All right, you know, that that's enough." Well, we five thousand combined within that week, and then Yelp just, you know, covered it. Oh, day. okay, okay. So five thousand in the week, uh, you know, and it just didn't quite work out. And then just kind of do a little fast forwarding because I know, uh, you know, we're, we got to start to wrap things up here. But um, I know you eventually got into options. And, you know, what, what, what kind of brought you uh, into the world of options? Well, just following some of the Twitter people out there, gurus, I guess you want to call them, not really gurus, but, um, and then I had a buddy that I spoke with and, uh, he, he traded solely options and he's, you know, me and him did screen share and he'd show me some things. And, uh, so I started looking into him and, uh, so, you know, there's what we call kind of generally easier stocks with tighter spreads that are more friendly for, for new op- options traders. What, uh, what, what options were you trading? Uh, well, a <laughs> uh, price line. Uh, <laughs> All right, we got to stop right there. Just to add, some, Chez, you're the resident options trader. Add some context to a new person <laughs> just getting into options and then deciding, hey, I want to trade price line options. Give us some context of price line. So, you know, Apple's a $100 stock, Facebook's a 50 or 60 or $90 stock, whatever it is now. Um, they have penny spreads, which means it's very easy to get in and to get out. They're very liquid. Priceline, however, is an $1,100 stock with very, very low liquidity. There is no such thing as, you know, getting in or out for a penny. It's usually a dollar spread, $2 spreads, $4 spread. Uh, it's a very, very wild west. You're either going to make a ton really quickly or you're going to get destroyed. So, um, yeah, and you know, here's Alex, brand new to options, and he's uh, he's going to the Wild West right out and the gate. You, you and uh, Alex were talking a little bit on Twitter or, or whatever, what, weren't you at that point, Chaz? Uh, yeah, yeah, we were, and I uh, I did call him crazy. I I did actually call you crazy because <laughs> I didn't even have the stones to do that, and I had been you know looking into options and you know been trading options for a year at that point. And so how did how did that go? We have context. In other words, like Chess said beautifully. Priceline is like the wild, wild west of options. It is the ultimate high risk, high reward, uh, you know, type situation. So, uh, Priceline, I know you got off to a good little start. So, but I guess just you know, how did all that go? Well, I um, I, I funded four seventy, and you know, this is in TD Ameritrade. And this is after I took the Doe certificate and got the Doe rates and all that. And uh, four seventy, and I think in two days I got up to a thousand. There, so there comes the high reward with Priceline. It is high reward. So I mean, 470 I'm, I'm, up to 1,000 in a few days. So I, for you listeners out there thinking, wow, that's amazing. Priceline, here I come. But let Alex finish his story. And I, I want to interject here too. Alex is also telling me that you know he got this and he's Priceline is his boy and he's just kind of <laughs> taking it to the woodshed. So, But yeah, continue. What, what happens after that high reward? Well, <laughs> um, I was playing you know, some other stocks, LinkedIn and Stocks that sh- I shouldn't be playing, like you know, it's like you said, the, the, you're Im- immediately down due to high spread, and you just better hope it goes in your direction because if you have to sell at the bid, you're gonna lose. And um, I was pl- playing a few days, and I, you know, made some money, and then um, I held one overnight, and I think price got gap down forty dollars the next day. <laughs> Which, so- to give you guys context, is not. It's not rare for Priceline to no. do that. Eleven hundred dollars stock, it jumps fifty bucks, a hundred bucks. It's like nothing for that thing. It's crazy. And but what what was did you have your what was your account size like? Did you have your entire account in this gap one or or what was the? Uh, uh, situ- I just lost um, the house's money, but pretty much that whatever six hundred dollars I put in overnight. The thing about it, it played with me because as soon as it opened, I was up three hundred. So I was man, my account was almost thirteen, fourteen hundred. And then about five minutes later, I looked at my phone app and um, wait, I gotta, I gotta cut you off here. You're doing all this from your phone? Oh, oh yeah, don't give me. Oh my god, trading. Okay. All right, context here. He's newer to options. He's trading the wild, wild west, and he's doing it from his phone. You you were doing all this from your phone? Uh, yeah, I've, I'm very rare in this whole year that I've traded this has been on a computer. Okay, so I'm sorry. I just I I guess I didn't realize that all this was taking place on your phone 
nonetheless. I mean, technology is great, folks. Don't get me wrong. Uh, yeah, companies have great apps. But, to, I mean, to be trading Priceline as a new options trader on your phone, I'm okay, so you're up $600 or whatever. I mean, where, where did this all end for you? Well, I, well, this specific case, whenever I was up, $40 gap down, well, of course, you lost. I lost everything because it was on a Friday as well. And then it just went to nothing, so... So the the kind of fast forward, I mean, I know, but I, I know basically you, you had to stop. You had to stop trading because I mean, you, you basically, for lack of better words, you blew up your account. So what was the what was the trade that finally blew up your account and sent you to the sidelines? This one did price line. I didn't okay. lose. I put in, but I lost my profit. But I knew then. I said I can't do this anymore. I so said, you I did. You did walk away with some money then. Yeah, I, I mean, I still maintained my four seventy that I put in, but I lost the profit. But I knew. I knew then I said this is a whole different game where you know with Priceline all it has to move is a dollar and if you're in the wrong end oh the op the options are just brutal brutal and they are and well I I see I always thought that you totally lost everything but to give credit where credit's due at least you thought you know what Alex I got to I I got to just get out of here I am I am gambling I I'm I'm doing I just got to leave, and that was uh, what month? That was what about four or five months ago? Yeah, it was four or five months ago. So I totally stopped everything. I said, you know, I never intended on quitting the market. I just needed some time off, clear my head, pretty much find to myself. I mean, what? You and know, that, what I, and that's what you've I'm, you've been doing. And I, this is the very unique part about this interview is, for most cases, you know, people have started to get their groove. They're starting to you know get into things. But Alex is literally. You know, you're still on the sidelines, right? You're still, you know, getting your your ducks in a row, right? Yeah, I actually funded three hundred dollars today in TDA. I played Baba and made like four dollars today because I didn't want to hold it overnight. And okay, know, so you're like, literally just now dipping your toe back into the market <laughs> after five months. Yeah, and I have I have strict rules. I mean, I have a plan. I have. Um, yeah, I'm a. I mean, I'm a different person now. Like I said, I took four months. I I still maintain a little studying, but um. So let me ask this because we got to start to wrap things up. But like I said, this is a unique interview. You're somebody that uh, you know, just just kept going down the rabbit hole, down the rabbit hole, down the rabbit hole, and now you're finally getting back in. So looking back, uh, sometimes we phrase this as a time machine question. But what have you learned? That now going forward, what are the what are the key things that you know you need to focus on? I mean, you've been through a lot of just rough periods. So, what are those key concepts that going forward, uh, as you're just stepping, your, putting your toe back in? So, I like to hear you've only put three hundred dollars in. So, you're dipping your toe in. What are those key principles that you're going to really focus on going forward? Well, not not trading from a cell phone. <laughs> Good answer. Um, have a plan immediately when you get into tr I mean before you even click the buy button you know why are you getting in here what is the chart telling you you know what are you willing to risk um, well let's see some other things um, have a stop loss in I don't care you put a market stop I don't like a limit stop because sometimes it jumps over it I've, I've had those problems put a market stop um, and just be disciplined, you know, be, be strict. You don't hear first trade. Us. Don't overtrade. Um, Maybe have a little uh, self control. I, uh, so yeah, you, well, if you don't have that, just quit the market, period. But I'm, I'm pretty sure, and I don't want to put words in your mouth, but I'm pretty sure you're extremely focused on look, Alex, I got to have some self control going forward, right? Oh. No more gambling. Well, and another thing that I've done is. I include my wife in things. <laughs> oh, that's a good answer. That's it, why is that the case? I, I think that's actually super, uh, super beneficial. Well, because this whole year I was kind of putting, you know, the trading under the rug. She didn't really wasn't too um, involved in it, and um, I was being careless. But you know, when a woman is involved, she's going to be on top of you a little bit more. <laughs> you know what? I I had an email from somebody that was killing it, killing it, killing it. And then he took a, a, a pretty bad, bad loss, and he said, you know what, what I'm doing now is I'm writing my gains and losses on a calendar now so my wife can see it every day. And I think that's actually fantastic because uh, you, know, you need an accountability partner. When you know somebody's kind of looking over your shoulder, 
oh, maybe I shouldn't be. Maybe that's good self control right there. I'll just leave it at that. So, um, well, you know, that's those are some good things. I mean, fantastic things. And you know, as as you get started here, uh, stay focused on those things and. Uh, you know, you're going to you're going to put yourself on a different path. But I know Chez has some uh, more lighter hearted questions now. I do. I do. So obviously your story was awesome, Alex. And we appreciate you coming on. Um, I do have a time machine and I'm sure there are a couple of things you'd like to tell yourself back in 2009 or, you know, even in 2014 or 2013. You know, what uh, what would you go back in time and tell yourself if you could go back and do that? And you had one bit of advice. What would be that single thing? Because you have listed off a lot of things, but that one bit of advice you'd give yourself. If there was one education, you got you have to get you have to get educated when you're in the stock market. And, and people, education does not consist of running Google searches, right? No, I'm not even I'm not even talking about Twitter. I'm not even in a chat room. You have to take a course such as robotic trading, and I, I plan in the near future to get CTU. I'm not a member of it yet, but you have to drain yourself with information because you won't make it. I mean, we, all of us here, have seen people come and go in the chat room. And we know one specific person. And, uh, you and have to get educated. And it happens quite a bit. So thank you very much for that. Well, let's let's end it with a, a couple fun questions here. So what is your favorite movie? I'm boring. I don't watch movies. I um, If I had a, 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 a movie... Or favorite recently, TV show. I don't watch TV either. <laughs> I do like military movies such as lately American Sniper or um, Lone Survivor, those Navy SEAL movies, and a few, and a few years ago, Act of Valor. Yeah, I'll those are those I'll are some solid. Favorite. About yeah. uh, what's your favorite meal? A ribeye, baked potato, and cheesecake for dessert, and a Michelob Ultra. <laughs> there you go. Makes there you me go. Hungry. <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, what's your favorite song or band? Um, I like a little bit of country music, nothing, I could care less for the other stuff. <laughs> and then finally, what, what do you like to do, uh, I mean, besides studying and, and looking at the markets, what do you do for fun or hobbies? Uh, deer hunting. Very nice, very nice. I love that Maybe. in the wintertime, and then I like working out, I'm start getting back to the gym, uh, so. Nice, nice. And then finally, you got three words. What three words would you associate with someone that you would say is a successful uh, trader? A disciplined. Uh, listen, disciplined, um, persistent. You know, cannot give up even on your bad days. And um, you got to you got to have self control. Which you know, ah, there you go. I was hoping you say that. I know it's two words, but you yeah. really. I mean, you cannot cannot make it i mean even self-control goes along the way don't get in a trade if you don't need to and if you're in a trade or if you've lost let's say your max loss per day if you want to make it 100 150 you stop that's self-control you follow your rules and self-control is going to uh is going to dictate all of that so Ches, any final words for our, our our brave friend here that that stepped out and uh admitted to uh, quite a few wrongdoings no, I just want to commend him for, you know, being honest and kind of telling his story. Um, doesn't have to sugarcoat it or kind of change any of the facts. I've known Alex pretty much since I joined the room as well. And um, we all kind of go through through periods of, you know, hardship or kind of trouble, kind of figuring out where our place is in the market. And I have no doubt that he will find his place in it, and he's well on his way to doing that. So really appreciate you being on, man. It's awesome. It's been great. And I will echo that, too. Thank you very much, Alex, for uh, hanging out with us today. Thank you. I enjoyed it, and I hope everybody will uh, will learn from it. Uh, I'm sure they sure they will. This was a very uh, beneficial uh, interview. I'm sure. Well, if you enjoyed today's uh, podcast, I'd like for you to do a couple things. If you're listening to this on ClayTrader.com on the show notes page, uh, click the share button, leave a comment below. Uh, we all read those. If you have any uh, questions for Alex, myself, or Chez. Uh, leave those down below. We'd be happy to answer those for you. If you're listening to this on iTunes, then please leave us a ranking or a rating, I should say. Leave us a comment. We like feedback. And, uh, you know, little things like that really do go a long way, and we'll keep uh, putting together these podcasts. So thank you again for hanging out. I know this one went a little bit longer, but it was really, uh, really a good one with lots of good information uh, of learning, you know, from somebody that was willing to talk about their mistakes. And sometimes 
Uh, you know, learning from mistakes is much better than, you know, always hearing about all the victories somebody has had. So get out there, trade without emotion and have some self-control. This has been the Stock Trading Reality Podcast. Thanks for taking the time to hang out. To learn more about Clay and the Clay Trader community, including the trading team, premium training, and more, visit claytrader.com.